Today I'm going to look at an AR model XA manual turntable. This is about as simple as turntables get. And you won't believe how simple this thing is. Let's check this one out. Today I have an old beat up AR turntable. It's a belt drive, a dual speed turntable that uh, needs to be checked out. The foam pad has certainly seen better days, but I'm sure it's still functional. This turntable here is a split platter. So you've got your, your main platter, but it also has a sub platter underneath it. This is where your belt goes. As you can see, there's no belt on this one. There's a belt there, it's just not in place. Because being transported, obviously moving around, the transport screws weren't put in it and the belt has come off. Belt doesn't look to be in too bad a shape. So let's just rethread the belt and check this unit out, see if it works. I'm going to lubricate this as well, but the turntable itself, or the, the platter, it seems to spin quite easily here. Let's just take a look underneath this unit. You can see this one here has got the, the ball bearing is there on this one. This one looks to be a steel ball bearing. Lubrication looks good. There's lots of lubricant on here, so I don't even need to worry about lubricating this thing because this thing's got tons of lubricant. And it just spins forever. This one here, dual pulley belt system, you have to change it manually on this type of a design. The smaller pulley here is for uh, 33 and the larger pulley is for 45. An interesting thing about these designs, I can feel resistance on the motor here when it's in the off position. Let's take a look at why that happens when it's got power. If I turn the power off completely, the motor will just turn freely. If I put on power, I can feel AC on the motor. This is going to be a, an AC capacitor driven motor and I do believe what they do on these ones is they just turn off the capacitor to uh, stop the motor. So turn off the second winding. To say this unit is not in the best of shape, uh, the cabinet itself is kind of bashed up. But I'm going to take the base off this unit and show you guys in the bottom of it. Of course, this is a model XA, and this is just a, a cardboard base these units had. Okay, here's the bottom of this unit. Let's take a look at how this is laid out. I'm just going to get the lid for this so I can turn it over and uh, not have things falling apart on here. So here's the AC switch on this. As you can see, the AC switch, there's a capacitor across it so it doesn't open the circuit completely. It just when it's turned off, it applies current through the capacitor. And here's the motor. And the motor has the run capacitor on it. We've got four wires coming out of the motor for the two coils. It's a synchronous motor. It's 120 volts. 115 volts and it's uh, 60 Hertz uses the point one microfarad capacitor 300 rpm and this is a low torque synchronous motor so it only runs at one speed there's nothing else in here unlike the other AR turntable which which also featured a 300 RPM synchronous motor, but it had a control board that could change the frequency. So it was actually feeding the motor, with the, the control board was generating the AC waveform that the motor ran on. This one here is governed by the line frequency. There's nothing on here but a capacitor to run it and another capacitor over here to stop it. So there's nothing on this one really that needs to be maintained. I'm going to put the cardboard base, and that's what this is. It's just a piece of cardboard. You couldn't get anything cheaper than that. But then again, 
this is what you're paying for on this turntable. You're paying for this suspension system with the three springs. So we'll place the belt on the unit. You just put the belt around the, the pulley and bring it around the sub platter for 33 RPM. And for 45, you just move the belt down to the larger of the two pulleys. And that's your 45 RPM speed. And then the belt falls off when you're going to turn it back to 33. These turntables are actually quite sought after because of the simplicity. Nothing is simpler than a belt drive turntable. Let's uh, check it out and see how it sounds. It looks like the weight has already been set on this, so I don't need to. It's 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 the counterweight's been set. I don't know if it's right or not, but it is locked in place, so I'm going to assume that it probably is correct. We can check the speed of this with the strobe scope disc, but uh, before I do that, I'm going to have to make myself a strobe light source because. The lighting in the workshop here is compact fluorescent. I have a couple of magnetic tubes over top, but uh, they're going to be drowned out by the light from the CFLs. There's an easy way to make a light source. I'm going to do this now. This is an old PL9 atenic lamp from an old aquarium that the, the, the hood, the um, got all corroded but here's the ballast for it and you can do this with any fluorescent lamp I'm just gonna do it with this one you can probably make one out of an LED as well and a transformer all you need is a uh, is a pulsating light source strobes this will give me a perfect source for this so what I'm gonna do is this because this is a this is actually a, a ballast as you can see this was designed for this lamp came with a really long cord I'm just going to attach it to the lamp itself I'm going to set this up. I'll make myself up a uh, strobe light. It's going to warm up the soldering iron. I'll show you guys how to make a strobe light out of a fluorescent light. The beauty of doing this to a compact fluorescent lamp is because I don't have a socket for this, but I'm just going to solder the wires directly to the pins and put some heat shrink tubing on. But then as soon as I plug this in, this light is going to, it's going to operate. So I've just got the wire stripped. Now again, you must use a ballast. Don't just hook this up to a line cord. This actually has the ballast in it. Otherwise the lamp will, will blow up. It'll uh, draw too much current and blow your circuit. So you must use a ballast to do this with any of these PL lamps. Any uh, like 15 watt um, uh, preheat start type of ballast will do the job as long as it's in series with one of the wires, with the line wire. So I'm just going to tin my wires. Solder them on. Then I'll bring up my heat shrink tubing. This is so that nobody gets a shock. Okay, now as soon as I plug this lamp in, see and I've got my, my heat shrink tubing on here to prevent any shock on here. As soon as I plug this in, this lamp is going to light up and it's gonna, this is going to glow blue because this is an atenic lamp, which is kind of cool. Now with this I can use this with the strobe disc. We'll turn on the turntable and we will see the lines appear to be stationary here.
without it, of course, under the other fluorescent lights, which are on an electronic ballast, you don't get the same stroboscopic effect that you do when you use a 60 hertz. You see the difference there? There's under the regular fluorescence, the high frequency ballast fluorescence, and then as soon as I bring this one over top, it's now clear, and you can see our speed is correct here. This is the, this is the correct speed here. And they want, they want to appear to be not moving, which they are not moving. So the speed is correct. That's how you make a, a quick and dirty strobe light. You can do it with a regular fluorescent. I just used one of these PL lamps because it's got the uh, starter built in. So any PL lamp and a, a magnetic ballast for a preheat start lamp, 15 watt preheat start lamp, I'm going to keep this as my test light for turntables. Let's throw a record on and take a listen to it. A little Monty, I believe, is in store. You notice that they have a, a needle guard in case you drop the needle. That's enough of that. Okay, it works. Uh, that's it for this one. Not much to do on this. Just check it out and uh, put that belt on and check the speed. Nothing really to go wrong with one of these other than a belt. You can't beat the accuracy of a synchronous motor. I mean, there, there's no way to adjust the speed anyway. Um, it's going to be correct. Nothing else you can do on them. Pretty simple device. I love it. Look at how this thing just floats, right? The whole arm. The arm and the, the turntable itself is all spring-loaded and floats. Great old units. Say very, very little to go wrong with these things. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.